everyone, today I'm here as usual a little bit late with my June wrap up and a little bit of a July TBR. Again, I was of course busy with work, but now I quit my job, now I'll have a hell of a lot more time. I just felt like I couldn't do it anymore, so there we go. I'll have a lot more time, which I'm really happy about. I'm already feeling so much better about my life in general, so yay. So let's start with the books. I did have quite a few DNFs at the beginning of the month. I'm just going to consult with my book, <laughs> like no notebook that I've had since 2014. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I DNF'd, decided to DNF Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. It just wasn't going at all for me. And like ever since deciding to not carry on with it, I never really regretted it, never even thought about it. So I think it's a sign that maybe this book wasn't quite for me. I remember picking up second time, like the first time I wanted to DNF it, I was about 100 pages in or so. And then I decided, right, I'm not interested in it. Then I decided to pick it back up again. And that's when I started to really enjoy it. But then again, at some point, I just, again, lost interest in it completely. So now I've just decided for sure that I'm not going to be reading the series. It's just not for me. And I'd rather be reading something I'm really interested in. But that does mean that <laughs> I'm going to have to DNF the other two books in a series that I didn't even touch. So, great. Um, they're going to go, so it's going to be Wind Witch and Blood Witch as well. I just, it's a shame. I would have liked to love the books, but it just didn't happen. And like, I don't see the point of forcing myself. Oh, it's, wow, it's nearly 600 pages. I didn't read that one massive book I mean I know that the series is apparently gets better and better with every book but I also feel like I just can't can't do it so I might just have to DNF the whole thing and maybe even unhaul it I'm not quite sure I might just keep it on my shelves or like on my extra shelves which I like for the unhaul pile and then decide whether I actually want to keep them or not then the second DNF was The Switch by Beth O'Leary. That one was the book club choice, I think, for May. And I got into 120 pages into it. I was enjoying one perspective from the older lady. She was really lovely, but the other, the younger one, they just seriously annoyed me that I didn't want to read it at all. And like, it was a lot focus on romance which I didn't really was not in the mood for that so I DNF'd it but now I think about it again and I feel like maybe I shouldn't have DNF'd it or at least I should have read the chapters from the older lady's point of view so that I get at least some of the story so again I DNF'd it for now but I just have this strange urge to keep it on my TBR and then maybe come back to it like I don't know a year or a couple of years later and just start from the beginning again because I might enjoy it I don't know, um, same with those series though, I really, I feel it's a shame, but at this point, maybe because I was also so busy and just couldn't get through any books at all, I feel like that affected me as well, but here we go. Then I also did another DNF, but that one was a reread of the Russian series that I've mentioned many times on my channel before. I just thought again, I've got so many unread books on my TBR. I don't know, I just felt like I need to read something different that I've never read before. Now going into the books that I have read and finished. So we've got The Day I Fell Into a Fairy Tale by Ben Miller. This one was actually a bit of an impulse buy and you will see it in my book haul as well for June. I went to the supermarket and decided, right, I really want to buy a book that I will just read on that same day and be done with it. Because I also wanted to listen to the audiobook of an audiobook as well because people keep saying how good it is to just um, read a book whilst listening to it at the same time and that's what I did with this book and oh my god the experience was so much more interesting it definitely is much more engaging it's much more fascinating and I felt I found that my attention was never really wavering anywhere I just kept my attention on the book which was absolutely lovely but this one as you can see is like a middle grade-ish fantasy um, but it's written by a famous actor that I did not realise until later on. 
I'm going to read you the blurb of this book. Lana and her brother Harrison used to love playing together until Harrison decided he was too old for games. But when a trip to the supermarket uncovers a magical portal to the world of fairy tales, Lana discovers that stories aren't a game. With the fairy tale world in danger, can Lana convince Harrison to believe again before it's too late? I did really enjoy it and it does have a lot of illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> So I thought it was quite a cute little book and I wouldn't mind reading more books from this author of He's Got the Night I Met Father Christmas and The Boy Who Made the World Disappear. I might read them one day, I might not, we'll see. So I did enjoy this one, it was kind of a cute little story. The next two books are the books that I started a while ago and just finished them finally in the month of June. So one of them is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. This one was like a historical fiction detective novel. It was weird, <laughs> but weird in a good way. I did really enjoy it. But in this one we follow a detective woman who goes to investigate the case of a missing girl who apparently is not supposed to exist, so there's something sinister about her. And that's pretty much the plot of the story. But yeah, like I said, it's weird. It's a weird book. <laughs> It's not something you would expect. I don't want to say a lot just in case of spoiling it because I'd rather not spoil it, but it was good. Um, it was humorous as well at times. Like I laughed out loud at a few points. And there's another like twist to the story that's not mentioned in, in the blurb at all, so I'm not going to mention that. But I really did enjoy that twist as well <laughs> so it was quite fun to read and in general i just really enjoyed the story it was mysterious as well um so yeah just a nice nice book i guess next one you might be really proud of me for actually finishing the beast of the prairie of the orange tree finally by samantha shannon i only had 400 pages left which was half the book but still, um, for some reason, again, it took me still a long time to read this one, even though I was enjoying it. I never really wanted to see an effort. It just was not the kind of read that I would absolutely love or be absolutely drawn to, not even sure exactly why. I did enjoy this one in the end, but it just took me a very long time to read this one. So this one, I do think everyone knows what this one is about. Um, a world divided, a kingdom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakes, awakens. So there are dragons in this book, kingdoms, there's a hell of a lot going on in here. And I did really enjoy the book, I just didn't love it. And it might be something to do with the fact maybe adult epic fantasy is not really for me. Or at least this specific book was not exactly for me. I did enjoy it, don't get me wrong, because I did finish the whole thing, otherwise I would have DNF'd it. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I didn't love it, that's all. And then the last book that I finished in the month of June was The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. This one was the book club pick, just one more page, for June. I really enjoyed this book. I tried Agatha Christie's book before in the past. I can't remember what it was. Um, and I thought I didn't particularly enjoy it, but this one was actually really good and I think it's one of her best ones apparently from what I've heard and read. Um, so yeah, this is my only second novel by the author. Now I'm definitely more interested in her stories. I would read more, but I haven't got any on my TBR. And now with me not having a job, I definitely won't be able to buy them, really. So... Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Poor Roger Ackroyd. He knew that the woman he loved had been harboring a guilty secret. She poisoned her first husband. And yesterday she killed herself. But guilty secrets rarely stay secret. Who had been blackmailing her before her death? Had it really driven her to suicide? And would it all be revealed in the letter that arrived in the evening post? Sadly, Roger Ackroyd wasn't going to live long enough to find out. The twist especially like at the end <laughs> I did not expect it at all so I really enjoyed it I also enjoyed the atmosphere the characters again I listened to that one whilst reading it which again was a great experience I really enjoyed doing that again it was quite atmospheric um, and I did like everything about this book really so this was a really really good one I really enjoy it and I highly recommend this 
Then there are the three books that I'm still currently reading. I know, I haven't finished them. So the, the two of them are non-fiction. It's How to Start a Conversation and Make Friends and Chariots of the Gods. I did start this one. But in this one, I'm only on page 24. This one is a little bit more difficult to read than I thought it was going to be. Or at least when I was reading it, I was super tired. So my mind just wouldn't focus. So hopefully now, when I've got a lot more free time, I will actually be able to focus my attention a lot more on this one. Because from what I was reading it, it's really, it's really enjoyable, really fascinating. It kind of opens your eyes to a lot of possibilities. There are unanswered questions about... The world in general and this author provides different like theories of why this could be and it's just fascinating to read so I'm hoping that I will get to this one properly in the month of July <clears throat> and of course the how to start a conversation make friends I'm only on page 50 which I have made slight progress in this one but again for some reason it just wasn't um, grabbing my attention much because I just wanted to read the fiction books just to escape so this one again hopefully I will just finish it in the month of July with me having a lot more time and then another book that was on my June TBR and I managed to only start is Viper the Isles of Storm and Sorrow by Bex Hogan this one is a YA fantasy book this book is set on a sea or rather on a ship in the sea we follow the main character Marianne whose dad is the viper who works for the kin, he's protecting the islands, everyone's scared of him because he's killing a lot of people and all that stuff and there's also a phrase, he will make me a killer or he will have me killed. I'm really, really enjoying this book a lot more than I thought I would because I thought I was kind of done with YA fantasy. But no, I can't say that at all because this book is so good, especially like the beginning. It's not your typical YA novel I would have thought because at least at the beginning it was avoiding all of those typical narratives, I guess. It was just set on a ship and then some, some, something else happens. And I'm really, really enjoying this one so much. I like the main character. I love the story. I have so many questions for the book. And I do feel like genuinely after finishing this one, I will want the answer. So I might just have to buy the sequels, even though I can't really afford it. But honestly, this book is great. I'm really enjoying it. And at the moment, I'm on page 177. So I'm more closer to halfway through. And I'm really, really enjoying it. I can't wait to read more from it today. I'm, I will hopefully read more from it today. Now, I've also decided for the month of July not to give myself a big TBR and just go with the mood because I found out for the past couple of months I find it difficult to stick to a TBR to the point that I don't actually want to read the books on my TBR. So that makes me not want to read at all. So I've decided to give myself like free reign and go wherever. But there are obviously the three books that I would still like to finish in the month of July. And there are three more that I might, might get to, but can't really promise. So I'm just going to mention them briefly. But again, I could, that could change. I could go in a completely different direction, depending on where my mood leads me. Because that's what I'm planning to do for the month of July. Maybe even August, who knows. But of course, the first one is, again, Circus of Wonders. Still have not read this one at all. Then we've got the, A Room Full of Bones by Emily... Ellie Griffiths even. This is the fourth book in the series and I would like to get to this one this month but we'll see what happens. And then just to finish off the trilogy, A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Cameron. The second book was a disappointment for me but I still would like to finish the book and I also wouldn't want to keep too long of a break in between so that I don't forget what happens and still kind of more invested in the story so this might happen this month might finish off the trilogy. These are all of the books that I have read in the month of June. I'm planning to read in the month of June. Also this shelf at the moment is a little bit empty just because after a film book haul after this video I might just rearrange the whole bookshelf because um, at the moment especially my TBR they're set by genres and the fantasy shelf and the historical fiction shelf are the most overfilled ones to the point that some books are covering the others so I thought from now on I'm gonna put them in random genres just by maybe hardbacks keep together and then sort of do them either by colours 
or however I want to, I'll find out, but I just want to rearrange them so that they don't stand next to each other by genres because I think it's more interesting sometimes when they're not obviously together by genres so that gives me more of a variety and I'm not biased towards one book or another because of the specific genre so yes, um, I might do that today um, so yeah, there we go, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one thank you for watching, bye!